The Jack Benny Program, transcribed and presented by Lucky Strike. The cigarette that's toasted to taste better. If you want better taste from your cigarette, Lucky Strike is the brand to get. It's toasted to give you the best taste, yet it's the toasted Cigarettes, they take fine tobacco, it's light, tobacco, it's mild, tobacco too. And it's toasted, yes, it's toasted, because the toasting brings the flavor right through. So to get better taste from your cigarette, Lucky Strike is the brand to get. It's toasted to give you the best taste, yet it's the toasted cigarette. This is Don Wilson, friends. That version of the Lucky Strike song Dorothy Collins just sang may be different in tempo, but the story is still the same. A lucky tastes better because it's toasted to taste better. You see, better taste starts with fine, mild, good-tasting tobacco. L-S-M-F-T, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And then that tobacco is toasted. It's toasted is the famous Lucky Strike process that brings Lucky's fine tobacco to its peak of flavor tones up this naturally good-tasting tobacco to make it taste even better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. So, friends, remember that next time you buy cigarettes. And be happy. Go lucky. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight Jack Benny does another television show. But meanwhile, let's take you back to yesterday. Last night, the members of the Beverly Hills Beavers put on a play at the school auditorium. Of course, Jack Benny, who happens to be the treasurer of the club, was planning to go. We now find Rochester pressing Jack's tuxedo. Press it once and press it twice, then press it once again. It's been a long, long time. <laughs> Well, I got the pants pressed. Now I better finish pressing the coat. I wonder where Mr. Benny bought this tuxedo. It should be on the label. Yeah, there it is. The Pep Boys. <laughs> oh, Rochester, have you finished pressing my clothes yet? Yes, boss, but who was the last one you rented this tuxedo to? Why? Every time I lay the coat down, the arms fold. <laughs> oh, stop. Anyway, you're only going to a school play. Why dress formal? Well, Rochester, the Beavers aren't putting on just a play. They're going to do their version of my radio program. You see, each one of the kids will portray a member of my cast. And since I'm the inspiration for their show, they may ask me to come up on the stage and make a speech. Gosh, I'll never forget ten years ago when I made that speech at the Academy Awards. Boss, I didn't know you were on the speaker's list. I wasn't, but I just had to get up and tell them what I thought of. <laughs> I'm glad I did, too. I'll get it, Rochester. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Am I early? Well, we don't have to be at the school auditorium for a half hour yet. Sit down, Mary. Thanks. Here's your tuxedo, boss. Oh, help me on with the coat, Rochester. I want to see if it still fits. Thanks. Jack, if you wear that old tuxedo again, I'm not going out with you. It's so old-fashioned now. Old-fashioned? Yes, look how long the coat is. <laughs> what are you laughing at? You look like the villain in The Drunkard. <laughs> Only when I wear the cape. <laughs> now, Mary... Jack, I mean it. I wouldn't be seen dead in that tuxedo. Our last customer didn't mind. <laughs> now, cut that out. I'm going to wear this tuxedo, and that settles it. Now, Rochester, I won't be home and... There's the phone. I'll get it. Hello? Hi, Jack. This is Bob. Say, oh. I hate to bother you today, but... Well, I wanted to let you know I'm on jury duty. 
Jury duty? You're mm. kidding. No, the first case comes up Wednesday, and it may last for weeks. But this is ridiculous. You'll miss my show. Didn't you tell him you worked for me? Yes, I did, Jack. Well, why didn't you tell him it would be a hardship if you had to lose the income from my show? Well, I told him, Jack, but that didn't work either. Why not? Well, they pay more than you do. <laughs> what? Three bucks a day. Well, that temporary work is always high. I think. <laughs> but, Bob, I just can't let you miss my show. Well, there's really nothing you can do about it, Jack. Oh, no? What about my contract with you? Well, that's the case that we're trying Wednesday. <laughs> now, look, stop joking, Bob. I need you for the show, so I wish you'd try and make it. Okay. Say, uh, by the way, Jack, did you get that recording that I made with the sportsman? Oh, yes, Bob. It's right here. Well, will you play it? I, I think you might enjoy it. All right, I'll play it right now. So long, Bob. Goodbye. Oh, well, Mary, Bob sent me a record that he made with the Sportsman Quartet. Let's play it. Okay, where is it? Right there by the phonograph. And play it loud, Mary, so I can hear it in the other room while I'm getting dressed. Okay. The sun is shining, oh, happy day. No more trouble and no skies are gray ever since... You said those words to me You said you love me I know it's true My life's complete, dear For now I have you Oh, happy days Oh, lucky me The moon is shining Oh, happy night Come to me, darling Hold me so tight I need your loving Really, yes, I do. You said you love me. I know it's true. My life's complete, dear. For now I have you. Oh, happy day. Oh, lucky me. Lucky's cleaner, fresher too. A lucky strike is a smoother smoke, it's true. Oh, happy day, happy go lucky day. Oh, happy day, happy go lucky Say, Mary, that was very good, and it was thoughtful of Bob to get the sportsman to do it with him. Oh, it sure was. Say, Jack, don't you think it's about time we left for the school auditorium? Yes, we haven't got much time. Rochester, get my car out of the garage, will you please? You can't use a car, boss. A nail went through one of the tires. Oh. I told you not to buy such cheap tires. Well, Rochester, the most expensive tire in the world can be punctured by a nail. A fingernail? <laughs> Well, what did you touch it for? <laughs> Always testing. <laughs> now what are we going to do? Well, I've got my car outside. Okay, we'll go in yours. Come on. Bye, Rochester. Goodbye. 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 <laughs> Jack, wasn't that a nice song Bob sang? Yeah. Bob, oh, Bob. look, Jack, here comes Dennis on a bicycle. Where? Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Mr. Benny. Oh, hello, kid. Gee, we were just leaving for the school auditorium. Aren't you going to see the Beverly Hills Beavers put on their play? Oh, sure, but it's such a nice night, I thought I'd ride over on my new bicycle. Oh, is that a new one, Dennis? Yeah, I won it last night on a quiz program. On a quiz program? Gosh, you're really lucky. Yeah. Well, was it a hard question? Oh, no, it was easy. The man pointed at me and said, would you pay $100 for this bicycle? I said, yes, so I gave him the $100 and he gave me the bicycle. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
Dennis. I almost won a refrigerator, but I didn't have enough money. <laughs> Look, kid, did the master of ceremonies of this quiz program have a little hammer in his hand? Uh-huh. Dennis, you were at an auction. Certainly. And all those people crowded around were bidding. I know what I'd have done if I'd have had the hammer. Now, come on, we better get to the... <laughs> Now, come on, we better get to the school auditorium. Okay. Oh, by the way, Dennis, did you ask your mother if you could go duck hunting with me again next week? Yeah. Dennis, I didn't know you go with Mr. Benny on his hunting trip. Oh, sure, I'm his retriever. You... <laughs> you mean when he shoots, you bring back the duck? No, when he misses, I have to bring back the buckshot. <laughs> all right, all right. Now, Dennis, leave your bicycle here and come with us. Okay. Say, this school auditorium really is packed. Well, we got pretty good seats, didn't we, Mary? Oh, these are fine. Right in the center, too. Can you see all right, Dennis? No. Did you ask that man in front of you to take off his hat? It isn't his. What? It's mine. I put it there. <laughs> well, take it off and be quiet. Hey, Mr. Benny. Mr. Benny. Oh, hello, Joey. Is everything ready backstage for your show? Uh-huh. Are the kids nervous? Yeah, a little bit. Well, good luck. Thanks, Mr. Benny. And by the way, you'll be happy to know that we're almost sold out of popcorn. Well, good, good. Now, push the lemonade. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. You know, Miss Livingston, tonight we're going to do a takeoff on Mr. Benny's radio show. I know. Say, Joey, did you finally get a fat kid to play Don Wilson? Uh-huh. Good, good. Now, you better hurry or you'll be late, huh? Well, Mary, it won't be long now before the show starts. Gee, I hope the beavers really do it. Hey, a... hey, Mary. Mary. Huh? Don't look now, but there's a lady across the aisle who keeps staring at me. I guess she recognizes me. Where? Shh, here she comes. Pardon me, but would you be good enough to give me your autograph? Why, certainly. There you are. Thank you. You were wonderful in the drunkard. <laughs> Hmm. I told you not to wear that cape. I'll take it off. You know, Mary, this idea of the little kids doing my radio program is really clever, isn't oh, it? Oh, yes, Jack. I think it's the cutest thing that... Oh, the curtain's going up. Yeah, yeah. And look, look, they've even got a kid orchestra. Quiet, here they go. of our show. A man who still has the first dollar he's ever earned. Not because he's cheap, because you can't spend Confederate money. <laughs> Jack Benny. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking. And Don, did you think up that introduction all by yourself? <laughs> yes, Jack, and I thought it was very funny. Oh, you did, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Don. Don. Blubboo <laughs> boy. <laughs> hey, take it easy. The last time you shook like that, you got a proposal from Hilo Hattie. <laughs> and another thing, Don. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. How you, Don? Say, Mary, I called you last night, but your mate said you were out. That's right. I went to the baseball game with Van Johnson. That was nice. Who won? When you was Van Johnson, who watches the game? <laughs> Mary, what's this you dropped on the floor? That? Oh, that's the letter I got from Mama. From your mother, eh? What does the third dimension of Plainfield have to say? <laughs> <laughs> I'll read it to you. My 
darling daughter, Mary. Just a few lines to let you know that we are all well. The weather's nice here now, but as you probably read in the paper, last month we had an awful blizzard. And when your father came in from the barn, his milking hand was frozen. Gee. I hope it thaws out soon, as we'd like to get the cow out of the house. <laughs> I don't blame them. Say, Mary. Mary, that little girl is a natural-born actress. And... Yeah, she went right on reading the letter, even though her bloomers were slipping down. <laughs> yeah. No other news, so we'll close now with love, your loving mother, Mama. You know, Mary, your mother's letters get better all the time. But let's get on with the show. Oh, Bob. Bob Crosby, I'm talking to you. Oh, I'm sorry, Jack. I didn't hear you. Didn't hear me? No, I've been rehearsing the band and my ears are still folded. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, say, Bob, I meant to ask you, did you learn how to pronounce that word yet? I think so. Let me hear you say it. Manischewitz. <laughs> well, keep trying, Bob. You don't want to disgrace your wife and children. Say, Jack, what is it, Don? I think this fellow has a telegram for you. Well, what's he waiting for? Oh, boy, boy. <laughs> Western Union? Who do you think I am with this uniform, Nelson Eddy? <laughs> Never mind. Just give me the message. Here you are. And here's a tip for you. Oh, boy, a nickel. Now I can send my father through college. <laughs> Say, I've had trouble with you before. What's the matter with you? Do you enjoy aggravating me? Whoa, joy! <laughs> I wonder who this Jack, telegram... you only gave a, a nickel tip. That's the cheapest thing I ever heard of. Mary, be quiet, or you'll be known as Nylon Nelly at the May Company. <laughs> <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction tonight, we are going to do... Hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, Mary. Hello, Dennis. Hey, kid, I'm glad you got here because it's time for your... Wait a minute. Dennis, look at me. Huh? Dennis, this is the first time I ever saw you wearing glasses. Are your eyes bad? No. Then why are you wearing those glasses? My uncle died and left them to me. (laughs) Your uncle? Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, I can't see a darn thing with him. Kid, if you can't see with them, take them off. Just because somebody leaves you something in a will, you're not compelled to use it. I'm not? No. Anybody want to buy a set of teeth? (laughs) Now, cut that out. And take off those glasses. It's time for your song. Okay. While you're singing, I'm going out in the hall and get a candy bar out of the machine. was a peaceful man, if you know what I mean. The cops picked up the pieces after Clancy left the scene. He never looked for trouble, that's a fact you can assume. But nevertheless, when trouble would press, Clancy lowered the boom. Oh, the Clancy, oh, the Clancy. Whenever they got his eyes shut, Clancy lowered the boom. Boom, 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 boom. The neighbors all turned out for Kate O'Grady's wedding night. The people said, let's have some fun. I think I'll start a fight. He wrecked the hall and kissed the bride and pulverized the groom. And quick as a wink, before he could think, Clancy lowered the boom. Oh, the Clancy. Oh, the Clancy. Whenever they got his Irish up, Clancy lowered the boom. Oh, the Clancy. Oh, the Clancy. Whenever they got his Irish up, Clancy lowered the boom. Sure, it was a 
most beautiful sight you ever did see when Clancy lowered the bone. <laughs> Oh, here it is. Now, let's see. They've got Hershey's, Circus Peanuts, Lifesavers, Babe Ruth, and Milky Dip. I think I'll get that one, a Milky Dip. Hey, Bud. Bud. <laughs> huh? Come here a minute. Yeah, what you doing? I'm getting some candy. What kind? A milky dip. Uh-uh. <laughs> what? Get a hoishy ball. <laughs> Why a Hershey bar? In this hot weather, nothing runs like chocolate. <laughs> but, but I want a Milky Dip. Milky Dip hasn't got a chance. <laughs> what are you talking about? Milky Dip not only has chocolate on the outside, but it has cream in the center. That's what'll give you the trouble. <laughs> what? Cream is hard to handle unless you whip it. <laughs> uh, gee, I never thought of that. You really think I should get a Hershey bar? Can't miss. Look at the last performance. <laughs> last performance? Yeah. Coming out of the machine, Hershey was boxed in by Lifesaver but got through the hole. Really? And Lifesaver was the flavorite. Well, I don't know. I'm still gonna... Wait a minute. I know what I'll do. I'll get Almond Joy. Okay, it's your dough. <laughs> Wasn't he cute, Jack? Just like the tout on our show. Yeah. Hurry up, Jack. Dennis has finished his song. Okay, Mary. What took you so long, Jack? Oh, I ran into that racetrack tout. Now, where were we? We're supposed to start our sketch. Oh, yes. Well, hold it a second. Kids, before we start, I want to call Rochester. Oh, Mabel. What is a good truth? <laughs> Mr. Benny's line is flashing. Hello? Hello? Gertrude, will you try to get me Rochester, please? Just a moment, Blue Eyes. <laughs> he wants I should get him Rochester. It's a good thing he talked to you. I'd have hung up on him. <laughs> Why? Jack took me out once and didn't even kiss me good night. I can't understand it. I even brought my lips up close to him. Like this. Well, no wonder he didn't kiss you. What? I've seen a better pucker on a clothes laundry bag. <laughs> operator, operator, get me a Rochester. Yes, Mr. Benny, I'm ringing for you. Mr. Benny's residence, star stage, screen, radio, television, and get your income tax filled up by the man who knows. <laughs> Never mind that, Rochester. Oh, it's you, boss. Yeah. Did the man from the used car lot come around to buy my car? Yes, sir. Well, did you tell him the price was $1,000? Uh-huh, but he told me that the used car market has dropped some in the last few days. Oh, what did he offer you? Seven fifty. Well, that isn't so bad. You ought to see where the decimal point is. <laughs> now, watch, 
Chester, stop being on his side. You know as well as I do that the car is worth a thousand dollars. Oh, boss, come now. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, tell the man I'm not selling it anyway, and come down to the studio and pick me up. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> You were on the phone so long, we haven't got time to do the play. I don't know. You try to put on a program and something always happens. Play, Bob. Lemonade. Get your lemonade in the lobby. Jack! Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jack will be back in a minute to tell you about his television program, which goes on at 7 p.m. tonight over the CBS television network. But first, a word to you smokers who are looking for better taste in a cigarette. Better taste, friends, is the prime concern of the makers of Lucky Strike. That's why a Lucky is made of fine, good-tasting tobacco that's toasted to taste even better. Yes, better taste begins with fine, light, mild tobacco. Good-tasting tobacco. And then that tobacco is told.